So let's get to it. There's a problem with the small form factor Hackintosh behind me, and it's airflow. Most of the components inside, they've got air flowing on them pretty much constantly. There are six fans in there. But what I'm talking about is the NVMe drive on the bottom of the motherboard. In my last video, I complained about that NVMe drive. It doesn't get the same respect as the one on the top. No respect at all. And here's the second one sitting here on the bottom of the board, exposed to the elements, all alone, no other components around it. I don't know why that doesn't get a heat sink. See, I did say that. Mm -hmm. So this is the video where we fix that simple problem and dissipate some of that heat using a heat sink. There are a bunch of heat sinks from which to choose when I was going through Amazon. Some of them look more flimsy than others. I went with one that looked like it could impale you if you threw it at someone. Sure, I probably would never need to use my computer as a weapon, but hey, you never know. The heat sink I bought came with a screwdriver, so that was helpful. And it came with a small brush. I have no idea why. What is this brush for? I guess if you need to do some painting and you live in like a really small house, Clearly, whatever factory in China made the heatsink also made these brushes. I shouldn't complain about getting free stuff. That's not me. I love free stuff. No, nope. I'm determined to use this brush, damn it. So the installation. It's, well, yeah, it's pretty clear. We take off the old NVMe drive. Wait, should I be concerned that there's rust around the screw? And it's only a year old. Yes, no? Okay, please leave me a comment about this if you have ideas of how a screw hole can start to rust after only one year. Let's take that heat sink apart. And you peel off the sticker for better contact with the NVMe. And you place the NVMe on the bottom part. And you peel off the sticker for better contact to the heat sink. And when I pulled off that sticker, it looks like the thermal pad came completely off of our heatsink, which, I don't know, let's get that back on there. This is fine. So very carefully, I put it back on. The parts were only lightly put together until I could line up these screw holes and I knew exactly where that NVMe would be placed. And you screw these pieces back together and you put it back on your motherboard. And we are done. Boy, that's a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yep, it's on there. Now for the most important part, the clearance check. Does it fit? Come on, baby. Get in there. Yeah, it fits. Oh. It is close, but it fits. A little word about the small form factor of the G4 cube itself. It's a case mod, and at the time, you actually get to choose where your I.O. plate is going to be. It's not like you can put it anywhere. It's not like I could put it on the side or the top or whatever. It could have gone maybe like two millimeters down or two millimeters up, depending on how much of the heat sink I cut into. And this actually plays a huge factor. I just lucked out. The fact that there's one and a half centimeters of usable space creating enough clearance between the motherboard and the outer cube wall just big enough for our heatsink. But hey, are we modding? Yeah, we're modding. Did the heatsink make an improvement? Well, let's take a look. I forgot to record footage of the thermals before the heatsink was on. Yeah, my mistake. But looking at the drive now, it's clear that it's operating at an acceptable temperature. What's more is it's a few degrees cooler than the one on the top of the board, which came with the heatsink provided by the motherboard, which is a great improvement. And there you have it. That was an easy one. We got to the end of the video a lot quicker than I thought we would. So what do we do now? You want to pad out the video? Okay, let's pad out the video. You want to know why we use metal as a heatsink? It's obvious, of course, but I couldn't actually tell you why. It's because metal makes an excellent heat conductor. What does that mean, though? When heat is being transported through direct contact, that's using conduction. 
When you touch the hot tea mug, you're actually using conduction to transfer the heat to your hand. Metal is such a good conductor because of the way it transfers electrons so easily. Metals have aligned positive ions, or cations, which move in a sea of delocalized electrons. Electrons are free to move around in a metal structure more easily because of this ionic bonding. And oh boy, am I out of my depth. There are much better videos than the one I'm creating. Let's just say metals make great conductors, and for this reason, we use them to remove heat away from microchips, including the chips on the back of NVMEs. Big metal makes for less heat on chip. Yeah, I shouldn't have padded out this video. It was done when we finished that heat sink. But hey, we got smarter together. And we learned a little something about metals.